I don't think that's what they mean. Huh. So the Garrus sent you to track me down. What a joke. Now why the hell should I do that? You're below me, kid. I've been killing scum twice your size since before your mother squeezed you out. Well, that sounds like a bit of a bargain. I get to walk free with the Garrets thinking I'm dead. Sure, you can have my hat. I can always buy another with the caps I've got left. It would have been more fun fighting it out, though. See you later, kid. My doggy style. Hey, fellow, welcome to the Tops Hotel and Casino. I'm gonna have to ask you to hand over any weapons you might be carrying. Smooth and easy, just the way I like it. Don't worry, they'll be as safe as kittens till you're ready to leave. Oh, and a friendly word of advice. If you happen to stumble across any weapons during your stay here, well, just don't wear them openly. You dig? Now that we got that little business... Relax, baby, the safe as houses. We'll keep them locked up in the bank upstairs. Everything your little heart desires, that's what. You like gambling? Boom. Either one of the... Hungry? Or maybe you'd rather... Hey there, pal. Welcome to the Tops. And what can I do for you today? Ain't been on the strip long, have you, pal? Name's Swank. This is my joint. Benny oversees the business, sure, but I run the tops day to day. I'm his right-hand guy, you dig? Really? You got something to say about the big boss, huh? Well, why don't you say it to his face instead of yapping at me? Huh? What are you talking about? That doesn't... Why would he pull a stunt like that? Got anything else to offer? He's trying to pull a fast one on the big man. Crazy bastard. You got any more? Yeah? What else you got? Yeah, that looks like Benny's lighter, all right. Still, not exactly a ton of proof. Got anything else, kid? That's... Pretty shady, yeah. Could be Benny's up to no good. Could be this is somebody else altogether. What else you got? Jesus, kid, I think we got a real problem on our hands. Can't believe Benny's a no-good stinking punk trying to play house like that. Tell you what, I'll call Benny, keep him away from his suite. You go search the place. Here's the key, it's on the 13th floor. It's a room with the double doors, can't miss it. Maybe you'll find something we can show to Mr. House and get him arrested. Groovy, here's your stuff back. In case you run into company, you dig. I'll tell the boys to give you a pass to pack some heat. Go on then. Elevators to pass the slot machines on your left. You're back. Find anything? Yeah. You might have a jaw at Tommy Torini up in the Aces. He's always looking for talent scouts.
Hey! Hi there! Good to meet you. What can I do for you today? Good question! My function is to monitor Mr. House's data network and decode his encrypted transmissions. Allow me to introduce... It's what Benny always called me. Probably because I'm programmed to be so helpful. He was around here not too long ago. He's probably down on the casino floor now. You can wait for him here if you'll... Sure. Benny had me look at it a bunch of times. It's a data storage device. Kind of like a holotape, but a lot more advanced. As for what's on it, well, some of Mr. House's data transmissions made it sound like the chip could upgrade his defenses somehow. That's just a guess, though. The chip's a proprietary format. You need special hardware to read the data on it. There are two locations with non-standard hardware on the network. The Lucky 38 and an underground facility at Fortification Hill. I'd look there! Oh! He wants to kill Mr. House and use the platinum chip to copy my neurocomputational matrix onto the Lucky 38's mainframe. That should give me control over all Mr. House's defenses. Most prominently, his Securitrons. And then I just do what Betty tells me. Easy peasy! I was programmed to be helpful and answer any questions I was asked. I guess nobody bothered to restrict who I answer questions for. That was probably pretty dumb, huh? Ring a ding, baby. You're back. Find anything? He's what? Ah, jeez. Jeez, this is really bad. What are you gonna do? Yeah, that's ballsy. Good luck with that. Hello. What in the goddamn? Let's keep this in the groove, hey? Smooth moves, smooth. Hello. The guy everyone saw go in the Lucky 38, that was you? Oh, shit. Baby, this is not the place to go talking about that. What say you and me cash out? Go somewhere that's more private-like. Any questions you got, I'll answer. I can't do that, baby, and you know it. There's a lot of angles to this caper. Complexities aplenty. 
But plenty of action, too. Enough for both of us. But we don't jabber about that out here in public. Like I said, we should be talking somewhere as private. To start, I'll comp you the presidential. Best suite in the house. You deserve a taste of the VIP lifestyle. I'll hang out down here for a while to make everything look business as usual, then come to you. Any questions you got, I'll answer. Guaranteed. If that's what it takes to win your trust, that's what it takes. Follow me. Got my eye on you. So no funny business. Hello. No fun moves around the box. Got it. Now that you and me's got some privacy, I gotta ask, how is it that you're still living? house was on to me from word go? I thought I was being so clever. Once you were vertical, how'd you track me down? To think I deemed that flint box my lucky charm. Oh, the irony. I guess that's enough scratching around at first base. Tell me, which way is the wind gonna blow? You've got a crazy drop on me here, baby. That's for sure. If killing's what you came for, this would be the time. But baby, you'd be disappointing me. All the trouble you went through to arrange this shindig must be something more you're after. You got questions, I got answers. It's the house edge, baby, literally. It's what Mr. House needs to stack the odds in his favor. It's some kind of data storage device, Dig. So it's the data on the chip that's platinum, not the chip itself. Trouble is, the chip don't fit any computer, I've found. Must require special hardware. It has something to do with the Securitrons, I know that much. Upgrades their hitting power, gives them heft. Might be slightly useful if you're looking to defend the Strip from Caesar's Legion or the NCR. Or maybe both. Yeah, it's a tricky world out there. I'll tell it to you straight. A good cat to swing with, or was, until he stopped mewing. It was House's big idea to resurrect the Strip. He recruited the three families as muscle, showed us how to set up casinos, negotiated with the NCR. None of this in person, mind you. Did all of his talking through those Securitrons of his. But lately, the silence is deafening. The robots collect House's share of the take every week, and life goes on. Ain't exactly what I'd call leadership. We're the definition of cool, baby. We know how to swing. Folks come to us to learn how to enjoy themselves. Of the three families, we're the only ones with the heart and savoir faire to run the strip on our own. A tribe of finks. Every single one of them is a degenerate. Mark my words, they're playing an angle. How do I know? They always are. Personally, they give me the heebie-jeebies. There's such a thing as being too polite, if I may this, my pleasure that. Don't get me wrong, that resort of theirs is strictly ring-a-ding. But my guts say, don't go in the basement. A nation of meddlers trying to muscle in on our action. Well, we got muscles too, and smarts besides. Only reason the NCR hasn't busted up our scene is they're a little afraid of Mr. House and a lot afraid of Caesar. If the NCR beats the Legion at Hoover Dam, they'll turn on us and claim the strip, and we don't have the muscle to beat them. Not yet. Meanwhile, they're all that's keeping Caesar's Legion at bay. Plus, NCR soldiers and citizens are our best customers. It's complicated. Worst of the worst. 
A tribe of degenerate losers led by a creep. They crucify people for kicks, slaughter whole towns. The NCR beat them at the dam three years ago, but that didn't stop them. They spent the meanwhile gathering strength. They're going to try to take the dam again real soon. And if they do, Vegas as we know it will cease to exist. Something else you wanted to know? What a... Baby, ease off the gas. The chip belongs in the hands of someone who can use it, as in me, not you. You'll get a piece of the action and a sweet one, but the chip sticks with me. You help me and before long the chairman will rule all of Vegas, dig? With enough robot muscle to back it up. You'll get a sweet juicy cut of that action. But until that day comes, I'll keep you on retainer and pay bonuses for special missions. How's that sound? I know, you figured me for a creep. It's your prerogative. If you change your mind, come find me on the casino floor. In the meantime, the presidential is yours whenever you want it. Adios. Something else you wanted to know? In the meantime, enjoy the high life. The eyes of the mighty Kaisar are upon you. He admires your accomplishments and bestows upon you the exceptional gift of his mark. Any crimes you may have perpetrated against the Legion are hereby forgiven. Kaisar will not extend this mercy a second time. My lord requires your presence at his camp at Fortification Hill. His mark will guarantee your safe conduct through our lands. Incidentally, it will interest you to know that the man you seek has fled the Strip and is likely making haste for Kaisar's camp as we speak. I am the greatest of Kaisar's frumentari. It was not a challenge to find you, nor is this my first visit to the Strip. Go to him, and you will understand. Seek Kaisar by way of Cottonwood Cove, south of Nelson. The Kursor Lukulus will be waiting. Kaisar away. Where to, partner?
Events have transpired in a less than optimal fashion. Benny has fled the strip and the platinum chip has not been recovered. His destination is hardly a mystery. It's a near certainty that he's making his way for Caesar's camp at Fortification Hill. It's one of just two places on Earth that have the hardware necessary to read the platinum chip. The Lucky 38 is the other, of course. And whose idea was it to offer yourself up as a sacrificial lamb? Really? What did you expect? Are you going to keep giving him opportunities to kill you? It's becoming a hobby of his. I suspected he'd found a way to access my encrypted databases, but, well, this explains it. That would be how he learned of the Platinum Chip in the first place, not to mention where to intercept you on your way in. Highly resourceful, Benny. He would have made a fine agent had he stayed loyal. It's fortunate you came along to replace him, and ironic. I won't lie to you. It'll be dangerous. The next step will require you to infiltrate Caesar's camp at Fortification Hill. Absolutely not. Caesar is of great use to me. I don't want you harming a hair on that man's head, assuming you could find one. I want you to open a hatch in the basement of the derelict weather station atop Fortification Hill. You'll recognize it on sight. The hatch bears the logo of the Lucky 38, same as the Platinum Chip. You can't, but the chip can. The hatch will recognize the Platinum Chip and open sesame. Something very important. I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise, so don't bother asking. I'm not offering you an incentive as crude as money, though there'll be plenty of that. What I'm offering you is a ground floor opportunity in the most important enterprise on Earth. What I'm offering is a future. For you, and for what remains of the human race. I expect that if Benny doesn't have the chip, Caesar will make sure you get it. More on that later. Be off. Excuse me, but are you the courier who caused all of that trouble in the tops? Oh, great. The followers of the apocalypse, well, some of us anyway, have been interested in Mr. House's technology, how he stays alive. Of course, no one else is allowed inside the Lucky 38, so no one knows what's going on. Well, except for you. Right. We just want to find out what sort of technology Mr. House has used to stay alive for all these years. It could be of great benefit to the people we try to help, many of whom suffer from hard-to-diagnose illnesses. Really? Oh, I wasn't expecting you to agree so easily. That's great. Here, take this packet sniffer. It'll allow us to intercept data on Mr. House's network. You might have to manually remove the encryption from his data network, but hopefully you won't have too much trouble. Good luck.
Hey, have you been able to bug Mr. House's network yet? It looks like we've started getting reports from the tower's network. I'm sure the others will be able to make some sense of this. Oh, what the hell? The bug went offline. Damn it! I swear to God that old man has thought of everything. Well, it looks like this was all for nothing. But you did your best. I appreciate the help. Hey. A ranger here in the strip? Fine company, sir. Welcome to the NCR Embassy. How can I help you? Ambassador Crocker can be found in his office through the door to my right and at the end of the hall. The Embassy offices are to your left, while the barracks and living quarters are to the right. If you're looking for a history lesson, I suggest you talk to Ambassador Crocker. I don't have time to give my life story to everyone that passes through. Is there something I can actually help you with? Sir? Hello? I'm glad you could make it. I have something I wanted to discuss with you. It's a very important matter, and I have a strong feeling you're the perfect person for the job. I'm sure you've noticed that things are a little tense around here with all the issues between the NCR, the Legion, and Mr. House. It doesn't take a genius to see that something big is gonna happen soon. To be honest with you, the NCR is in a tight spot. But if we fail now, it's the people here that are going to suffer the most. I'm not willing to let that happen, and I don't think you're the kind of person that would either. To the northeast is a settlement. The locals here call them boomers. They are sitting on a munition stockpile that would be invaluable to us. I would like you to get in contact with them, and then do whatever it takes to convince them to help us. Unfortunately, the boomers keep to themselves and are, let's say, hostile to all outsiders. That's why I need someone like you. 
Someone with your background and reputation would have a better chance of reaching them than anyone I have available. In exchange for your help, you would receive complete amnesty for any past crimes against the NCR, as well as additional benefits and perks. Do you think you would be able to do this for me? Much appreciated. Once you've talked to them, come back and let me know if they will help us. Thanks for doing this. Remember, we need their resources to help us in the upcoming battle. Do whatever it takes. Interested in politics, huh? Well, grab a seat and get comfortable. I've been in politics quite a while now. Always had the drive to do it even when I was young. It's just something I was drawn to. I started my career over 20 years ago back in the NCR as the local mayor and worked my way up from there. I managed President Kimball's first run for a seat on the council. I suppose that's why I have this ambassadorship. I was elected to this post seven years ago. I'm the third NCR representative to serve here in Vegas. Now, I've had my share of ups and downs along the way, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. That's it. Anything else you wish to know? Goodbye. So Benny went M.I.A., huh? I always figured him for a coward. Really now? Well, this is news. They could possibly supply what they need, but they would need to supply us in kind. They have the tech know-how to make our stills work more efficiently. Pure alcohol means we can get our customers drunk quicker. Getting our customers drunk quicker means more caps spent at the tables and stuffing slots, if you know what I mean. Plus, the extra alcohol can serve as surgical disinfectant for their needs. The followers are a good lot. They've stitched up our boys in the past. Good. We can supply them with all the medex they need. For the fixer, we'll only be able to send over some basic drug components. We're not in the business of getting people off drugs, so we don't really dabble in that side of things. The followers should be able to whip some up with what we have available, though. They just need to agree to fix up our stills and keep them maintained, plus cover the cost for raw materials needed to make the alcohol. We've got the basics covered, but now you mention it, we have had unusual requests from some of our wealthier customers. If you can recruit escorts to match these customers' proclivities, I'd be willing to pay you finder's fees. Our wealthiest client has a thing for ghouls, and a thing for cowboys. He wants an escort who can satisfy both fetishes. Plenty of customers have said they'd be willing to pay extra for a suave talker, someone who can fake the boyfriend experience real good. And then there's these disgusting robot fetishists you may have heard about. Well, those creeps want a sex bot. Have you ever run across a sex bot? Not that I'd ever want one within a hundred feet of me, but I gotta be a businessman about it. Just direct them to the Wrangler. Yep. Welcome to the Atomic... 
The best place to start would be with Ralph, at Mick and Ralph's over on the... I hear Benny went missing. I can't help but wonder what happened to him. Yes! Where's his hat? This is great news. No one screws with the Garrett twins and gets away with it. I need to find a place on the wall for this. And for your reward, here's 150 caps. I trust there were also some valuables on McCaffrey. Also, we would like to set you up with a room. You can have the corner room, rent free. It was McCaffrey's. Now that he's dead, we're happy to let you use it. Thanks for helping us. Bye. Hello again. I'm retired, but life has been a bit dull without some kind of action. What's the job? Ah, I get you. So you think because of my past escort work, I'd be interested in that kind of thing. I got out of that work because it just made me feel empty inside. What makes you think I would ever go back to that degradation? You know what? You're right. I looked at the whole thing from the wrong angle. I suppose I could be a loving muse to some, while simply relieve stress and tension in others. Thanks for that insight. Tell Garrett I'd be happy to start at the Wrangler immediately. This should be a nice change of pace from retirement. You're the one who's been going around helping people around here, right? Hey. Howdy. They already have that pig McCaffrey working for them. Do they need another guard? Uh, I've escorted... I'm all boot knives and leather, friend. And a ghoul besides. What kind of weirdo wants what I've got? Weirdos into bullwhips and necrosis, huh? 
Doesn't sound half bad. What am I thinking? I'm no whore. And I ain't about to hand my ass over to some penny ante hustler like he owns me. Mmm. They do have a damn good selection of hooch over at the Wrangler. If I get to choose my customers, if I get to be a little rough with them, if my cut is fair, and if I get that discount, that just might work. Tell the Garrett's... Welcome. That's phenomenal. Who did you find? They supply Freeside with drugs and liquor. From my point of view, they're just better organized pushers. Upgrading their stills would increase their supply of liquor and chems. How does that help Freeside? Good point. We wouldn't be paying anything for their supplies, just a portion of our food waste to make ethanol. We get food from nearby wasteland farmers in exchange for medical services, so we could put our caps back into helping Freeside. Tell the Garretts we'll keep their stills running if they provide us with supplies. Thank you for arranging this. You've been a godsend. We don't have a lot... Thanks for the donation.
Fully integrated security technotronic officer active and reporting for duty. Yes, sir. Vestal reporting for duty. Please assume the position. I am programmed for your pleasure. Please assume the position. Visto will report to the Atomic Wrangler for further orders. Yes, sir. Come to the Silver Rush for all your... You must have some real... Hey, a chum. Imagine that. What's his name and when's he start? A she, huh? Well, I guess the customer who made that request can't get everything he wants. Hell, who knows? He might not even notice the difference. You did? Ha, damn! I've been looking for one of those for years! For my customers, I mean, I'm not into that kind of shit. Hey, I'm amazed you even found the thing in the first place. Here is double for your trouble. Those freaky fetishists ought to be satisfied now. It is! It will? My god, imagine the possibilities! It didn't happen to come with an owner- Hey, that- Once our stills are upgraded, we'll never be short on liquor. Most might view us as drug-dealing enablers around here. We've got enough crime in Freeside without a- And who would that be? I've heard some stories of that old guy. I'm amazed he's still alive with how much he's been through. If the stories are true, looks like that gives us a full roster of new ass to sell. Good work. Enjoy the bonus. Talk to you later.
Lucky 38. Yep. That tower on the strip, the one you can see for miles, I hear it ain't sealed up no more. Whoa there, pal. You better slow down, or you'll get blown up like the rest of the idiots who thought they'd scavenge in Boomer territory. Now that I've got your attention, might you be interested in a little information? It'll cost you, but it's well worth the investment. Whoa, simmer down. I'll tell you, I'm a gambler and a scavenger. 
I've made some cash from gambling and some cash from reclaiming goods that are no longer being used. Now, do you want my help or not? Oh, lordy, lordy. You haven't heard of the boomers? What rock have you been living under? They're a bunch of artillery slinging, grenade lobbing off. There is a way, and I'll tell you, for a little wager. Well, I know the secret to... If you make it back... Okay, here you go. That page has the details, but it's all in the timing as you move from building to building. I'll be here watching, so I'll know if you've made it to the gate or not. Remember, there's 600 caps in it if you make it. Whoa there, pal. You better slow down.
It's going to be a dream come true. What? That's tremendous. I'll transmit instructions to the robots to start packing up the plane to bring it back to Nellis. I just told you, the robots are going to handle it. They'll break the plane down into pieces and move it up from Colville Bay and... We... let's just say they'll... Hey, I'd better get... Hello, friend. What you have done for us is a miracle, child. You have fulfilled the only dreams we ever had outside our walls. You are a trusted friend of us all. If there is ever a way for us to help you, child, tell me, and I will make it so. Of course, my child. After all that you have done for us, we would love to help you in the upcoming battle. After all the training and virtual reality, the young ones would relish an opportunity to put their skills to... heard about you from the officers at the beach. Hello. It's good to have a friend of the NCR here. What can I do for you? I hope you've returned with good news. Are they willing to help the NCR? Excellent work. I can't tell you how useful that would be. In any event, I have another assignment ready and waiting for you. But we can speak of it later. Rest up, and when you're ready, speak to me again. It's good to have a friend of the...
So I did. As you may have noticed, our position here in New Vegas is tenuous. We've made great strides, sure, but the NCR is not welcome here, merely tolerated. And even then, not by everyone. We've had reports of violence against NCR citizens in a neighborhood just to the northeast called Freeside. Ever been there? I'm inclined to agree, but it's a slum with NCR citizens in it. And as such, it falls under my jurisdiction. Violence is something of a way of life there, but there's been a disturbing rise in the number of attacks on our people lately. More worrying is the fact that our sources suggest the violence is being perpetrated by the gang that runs the place, the Kings. I need someone to look into this that won't attract attention. Would you be interested? Good. Our men have come up with two different plans for seeing an end to the violence. First, our sources have tracked most of the attacks back to a king named Pacer. The consensus is that the violence will stop if he's removed. The problem is we can't simply kill him. In the current climate, the NCR would likely be blamed for his death. There is an alternative option, but my sources feel that getting rid of this Pacer fellow is our best shot. Make it look like an accident, or pin the deed on someone else. Look into this guy's affairs, and I'm sure you'll find something you can use. See? That's exactly the type of information we can use. In fact, that's perfect. Those fancy weapons the Van Graaffs pedal aren't exactly common. It goes without saying that actually getting the Van Graaffs to do the deed would be the ideal solution. However, if Pacer were killed with either a laser or a plasma-based weapon, everyone would automatically assume the Van Graaffs did it. Still, unless you want several dozen armed men at your throat, you'd have to kill them without being seen. Be careful. I'll leave the method up to you. However, there is an alternative if you'd rather try to handle things without bloodshed. In that case, we could take a different tact, but one that I at least have more experience with, diplomacy. If we can't go after the man responsible, we'll simply appeal to the man above him. The kings, including our friend Pacer, report to the leader of their gang, a man who calls himself the king. Go and talk to the king. Try to convince him to put an end to this violence. Pacer's a punk, but he won't likely disobey a direct order. The king might not be open to the idea at first, so you may have to integrate yourself with him. Do whatever it takes. When it's done, one way or the other, report back here and we'll take it from there. I wish you luck. If you run into some difficulty and think you'd rather just take the shot with Pacer, that's fine too. Things have been a lot better since you helped with those soldier boys. Thanks again. So, what can I do for you? Whoa, that's a doozy. Truth be told, I don't even know if I can pull something like that off. Damn straight they will. It's some of the other locals that I'm worried about. On second thought, if I can whip this band of hooligans into obedience, a straight tough guy or two shouldn't be a problem. Okay, you've got a deal. No more violence against the NCR on my watch. But this makes us even, you hear? Yeah.
Enjoy your time. Hi, what can I do for you? You saw our front sign, didn't you? It all comes from Michelangelo's... He's the reason the strip shines like a star at night. Check out the back... I've been here I planned it on the wasteland one. I trust you have something to report concerning the Freeside situation? Yes, do you have something to report? That's great to hear. He's got a lot of sway in Freeside, so we can expect a dramatic drop in violence soon. Now, you're probably wondering about your reward. This has been something of a hot-button topic, so I was able to secure this for you. I would, but I'm afraid the rest of the work in my queue pertains to matters I'll have to deal with personally. You do have another option, however. I've received a message from Colonel Moore up at Hoover Dam. She's been following your exploits and has requested that you meet with her. You're not officially in the employ of the NCR, so there's nothing forcing you to go. But I'd go see her sooner rather than later. The Colonel is not someone you want to keep waiting.
don't go quietly. The Legion can count on that. We're near a Legion slave camp now. I've been here before. Let's get one thing straight. I see any crimson, I'm taking a shot. You don't like that, you're on your own. Fine. But if you make any... Halt! What business have you in Cottonwood Cove, outsider? You were the Mark of Kaisar. You must be who Cursor Lucullus is waiting for. You may continue, but be warned. Mark or no, we will not tolerate aggressive action by visitors in the camp. Away, true to Kaisar. Awe, are you ready to head upriver? I am Cursar Lucullus, and my orders are to escort you to the Legion's camp at Fortification Hill. Are you ready to go? You'll be meeting face to face with the mighty Kaisar himself, founder of the Legion, conqueror of 86 tribes. To my knowledge, this is the first time Kaisar has ever summoned one of the dissolute to see him. 
Not even tribal chieftains received this honor. The trip will take a few hours. Take your place on the boat. By order of Kaisar, all visitors must disarm and relinquish all banned items. Alcohol and all chems, including stims and other addictive items. I know not why Kaisar would wish to speak with such a physically inferior whelp, but I will allow this one exception. You may bear Kaisar's mark, but do not attempt to share any of your medicine with anyone in the fort. Kaisar strictly forbids the use of chems and alcohol. By his order, all visitors must also relinquish their arms upon entry. If you come in peace, then there is no reason to not disarm. You will not be harmed unless Kaisar wills it. Your belongings will be... So long. Hi. I'm harsh on the children, but they'll be excellent legionaries. True to Kaiser. You must enter Kaisar's tent alone. Anyone else must remain outside. You must enter Kaisar's tent alone. You're the courier who caused so much trouble for my legion, and yet you dare come before me. The kings of Freeside are cooperating with the NCR now, which frees up soldiers to defend the dam. You even disrupted a promising weapons deal with the Van Graffs. Is it any wonder my legion has so little love for you? So tell me this, because I really want to know. I am feared with good reason, but you, of all people, dare to come here and stand before me, the mighty Kaisar. What were you thinking? We'll deal with Benny when the time comes. In the meantime, you do know why I wanted to meet you, right? A man nearly kills you, so you track him across the breadth of the Mojave. You arrive on the strip and waltz into the Lucky 38 like someone left you a key under the doormat. You visit the tops, and next thing you know, the head of the chairman is fleeing the strip like a whimpering little pup. 
When you set your mind to something, you get results. I like that. The question is, are you ready to get started? I have eyes and ears everywhere. It behooves me not to invade the West blind and deaf. It hasn't been hard to track your progress. It's not as though you've been keeping a low profile. The time is fast approaching when my legion will assault the Great Dam and invade the West. Before that happens, I want Mr. House knocked out of the game. A quick one-two punch, with you doing the punching. Benny is my prisoner. You don't deal with him unless you've dealt with me. Don't worry. You'll get the platinum chip he was carrying, and then you'll use it like I tell you to. Down the hill, at the west edge of camp, is an old building. It was here when the fort was taken in 2277. Inside the building is a hatch, and inside that hatch are two steel doors that bear the sigil of the Lucky 38 Casino. Now that same sigil is on the platinum chip Benny was carrying when we captured him. Isn't that interesting? Even more interesting, there's a slot about the same size as the chip on the console that opens the hatch. So you know what I think? I think the platinum chip opens those doors. Doors that can't be pried open or drilled open or blasted open. Because all that, I tried. Benny's theory, if I understood it through all the screaming, was that Mr. House stashed some kind of ultimate weapon down there. A gigantic robot to stomp us all to death. Who cares? Whatever it is, House built it. So I want it destroyed. I want you to destroy whatever you find in there. And then I want you to come back here and tell me about it. So go to the building and take this fucking platinum ship with you. My legionaries will meet you there, with your weapons and equipment. Talk to Benny on your way out. He knows I'm going to let you decide how he dies. Maybe you want to remind him. We'll talk again when you've destroyed whatever is down in that bunker. Not before. Our way, true to capital. Kaisar has permitted your weapons to be returned to you while you serve him. Kaisar has... Kaisar has forbidden you to leave until... Very well. I must come. Speak to me when you are ready and...
ready to proceed into. I see you reached your destination safely. Shall we get to work? Was that meant to be a shocking revelation? Of course Caesar wants it destroyed. He's afraid of what the bunker might hold, and rightly so. But you're not going to do that. You're going to do the smart thing, and work for me. The platinum chip is a data storage device. I need you to manually upload the data from the chip to the facility's primary computer. There's a terminal at the other end of this facility. There's a complication. While I can broadcast to this screen, I can't control any of the facility's systems. That means I can't deactivate its security bots, most of which appear to be active according to the status board I'm looking at. My army will do what an army does best, defend territory from invaders, and maintain order. Good. I won't hold you up any longer.
take cover until the day. Your work here is done. Return to the Lucky 38 so we can discuss next steps. You have a very bright future ahead of you. Thanks to your actions today, so does the rest of mankind. You've carried out Kaisar's will, but I must con- Your- You must enter Kaisar's. Go ahead and laugh, baby. I ain't blind to the humor in this situation. Yeah, well, laugh it up on your own time. Down to brass tacks. How'd your meet and greet with Baldy go? Sure. Baldy wants you to go down there in the bunker and destroy whatever Mr. House stashed there. Oh, you don't want to do that, baby. Whatever's down in that bunker is the key to the city called Vegas. So here's what you do. You go down there and you use the chip to do whatever Mr. House would have wanted you to do. And when you get back to the strip, you find Yes Man. I made it so that cat can't help but be helpful. Dig? I'm the most interesting person I know. Now, in the way back, we called ourselves the Boot Riders. Silly name, but that's how we rode the Mojave, dig? On our feet. We were nomadic badasses not to be trifled with. A gang of ruffians, though, with a certain panache. When House gave us the tops to renovate, his robots dropped off boxes full of suits and ties and wingtip shoes. Told us we were the chairman now. That caused an uproar, but I said, the name sticks. Chow to the old ways, baby. Time to swing in style. If the shoes fit, you wear them. Seven years. Took over three days after Mr. House introduced himself. Our chief at the time, mountain of a guy named Bingo, wanted to stay nomadic. I disagreed, so he challenged me to the knife. 
He looked so surprised when I stuck that knife in his neck. Thought he was so tough, but he was so slow. That's how I made Chief. It's how things were back then. We were east of Vegas when the first Securitron we ever saw rolled up on us. We junked it in a minute flat. The next day, 20 roll up, so we listened. Said we'd been selected. Vegas needed us to defend it. In exchange, we'd get cushy digs, full stomachs, medical treatment. Everything a nomad never gets, in other words. Most of the tribe thought we should say no. I thought it was the best idea ever. I prefer the term relocated. It took every stealth boy I had to cross the river at Cottonwood Cove. That was a close shave, riding a boat full of Legion boys. Once I was across, I changed into a uniform. I swiped off a dead legionary outside Nelson. Tried to sneak into the bunker, but that didn't work out. They found the chip. I wasn't going to tell them what it was used for, but let's just say they were persuasive. Which greedy overlord do you want to start with? Mr. House hides Vegas under his skirt when the bombs fall a thousand years ago, so it belongs to him forever? You buy that? Baby, every boss has a line to explain why he's special. Why everyone's got to do what he says. You're just figuring that out? Vegas got to swing, baby. Got to have pizzazz. Respect where due. But that old man is square to the core. The chairmen are true blue. The omertas are degenerates. Never trust them. Or the white gloves. Just something creepy about them. Set it up right and the families will roll with your caper. You might have to do some convincing. Now you're talking. That is the ring-a-ding move, baby. First base is whatever Mr. House would have you do. Follow orders, rig the game to his specifications. Then, when he ain't looking, you knock him out of the running and find a way to take control of those Securitrons of his. Go see Yes Man. I made it so that cat can't help but be helpful. Ain't we covered this? The only thing not bad about them is they ain't Legion. The NCR is the biggest gang of thieves in the Mojave. Only difference is they pass laws to make their crimes legal before they commit them. Nah, just spruce it up with a crucifixion here and there. Come closer so I can step on you. The Legion is twisted, baby. Original losers worshiping the king of creeps like he's some kind of god. They're worse than roaches. My advice? Put on your stomping shoes. Go on. Try not to smile so wide, baby. You might break your mouth. Yeah, Baldy said you'd get to decide. So which way you lean it? Yeah, to die in my sleep at a ripe old age after a marathon session of Hey Hey with 30 sex star broads. You'll set that up? Look, I ain't a harbor for illusions. I ain't expecting to get out of this shindig alive. That's why I'm trying to hand you my scheme, baby. It's called having a legacy. Sweet to offer, baby, but if you cut these ropes, every legionary in this camp's gonna come running with machetes. Now, on the other hand, if I had a stealth boy and a bobby pin, I could see myself out. Know what I mean? Baby, if you show me the door to Scramsville, that's where I'll go. Out of your hair, never to return. I've been a fink to you. Caused more than my share of grief by a hard mile. Let me go. You won't see me again. Baby, your generosity and spirit of forgiveness? Off the charts. This little care package is everything I need. I'll take it from here. I felt the ground shake a while ago. I'll take that as a sign you've got the job done. There are rewards for doing as I command. Today, your reward is vengeance. You get to decide how Benny dies. 
Go to Benny. Let him know what you've decided. My Praetorians will perform the execution, unless you want to perform it yourself. You need to work on your bloodthirst. We won't speak again until Benny is dead. Walk away if you want, but if you do, he's going up on a cross. You're still making a choice. Go ahead and laugh, baby. So, all this... Just imagine the look on ball... So all you gotta do is... Make they... I see. What am I... If you can get these ropes off... Go ahead and laugh, baby. So, baby, what did you find down there? Machetes at 20 paces, hey? I accept your challenge. You're a class act, baby. Not to say I'm gonna make it easy for you. True to Kaisar. I'm sure you found Benny's demise pleasing. The destruction of an enemy? There are few things more satisfying. Let's press on, shall we? As I was telling you before, I want Mr. House out of the picture. You have an interest in his death, too. If he knows that you destroyed his gadgets beneath the fort, he will strike back. You know where to find him. How he dies, I leave up to you. It's called an auto dock. As the name suggests, it's an automated physician, more or less. He can treat broken bones, cuts, punctures, scrapes. Sometimes I bestow its use upon someone I favor. Makes for a powerful gift in a culture that forbids painkillers and is largely ignorant of medical science. What did you want to know? My Praetorians embody the martial ideals of my legion. Each one of them has done enough conquering and killing to deserve the rank of Kenturian. Instead, I invited them to join my guard. So the invitee chooses whichever current guard he thinks is weakest and challenges him. The fight is to the death. It keeps them from getting complacent. Lucius has been the head of my guard for five years now. He was a subordinate guard for eight before that. No invitee has dared to challenge him yet. Maybe it's an issue of respect. He is getting on in years. Wulpes is the best of my frumentari. A remarkable individual from an unremarkable tribe south of the Utah. He was brought into the Legion as a boy. Survived training, 
fought well enough as a legionary to be promoted to the rank of Decanus. Then in battle against an unimportant tribe, he broke ranks and led his contubernium through a hole in their defenses to capture its chieftain. Well, his Kentorian wanted him crucified for disobedience, so I made him a frumentari. Whatever I require, infiltration, assassination, dramatic atrocities to break the spirit of the enemy, etc. They're mentally flexible. They operate behind enemy lines for extended periods, imitating the enemy's customs without becoming sullied. In all these things, Wolpus is a master. Linnaeus is the greatest of my battlefield commanders. Some might call him a great man, but I'm not sure he qualifies. Once, he was the greatest warrior of the Hydebarks, a tribe of the Arizona. Maniacal in battle. Sometimes he'd ambush Legion patrols by himself. When after several months we found and surrounded the Hydebarks camp, their chieftain raised a banner of surrender. The warrior, who was not yet Linnaeus, went insane with rage. He struck down his chieftain and attacked his own tribe. He killed 15 before they brought him down. He didn't die, obviously. I had him tended to. He was maimed, most of his face torn off. It was days before he regained consciousness. When he did, I went to his bedside and showed him the helmet I'd had forged to cover his face. I said he could have it if he'd fight for me. He accepted, on condition that he be allowed to kill the surviving males of his tribe. I said, make it the adult males, and you have a deal. Nanius is savage. Savagely loyal, too, but only to me. He has no love for my legion. But this has its uses. He has no attachment to his men, no compunction about battlefield losses. All he cares about is destroying the enemy. When another Legatus or a Kenturian fails to achieve results, I send Linnaeus to make things right. His first step is to beat the failed commander to death in front of his assembled troops. Then he orders the ritual of Decimatio. It means decimation. But in ancient Rome, the word had a very specific meaning, a punishment for cowardice. The legionaries are lined up in ranks. Every tenth man steps forward and is beaten to death by his brothers. It instills a certain robust obedience. Yes, this time my legionaries will be more frightened of the commander behind them than the enemy before them. There will be no failure this time, no retreat, no years of gathering slaves and resources for another assault. With Linnaeus to drive the legion forward, the dam will be taken. It will be our bridgehead across the Colorado. It's not going to happen again, that's all I have to say about it. And I've heard it's a bad idea to tempt the wrath of Kaisar. Change the subject. I'll hand it to that piece of shit. He was determined. He used some kind of old world stealth device to get across the river in a Legion boat. Seems the device ran out of juice once he got here, but he was dressed like a legionary. He was caught just outside the weather station. See, thing is, he didn't change his hairstyle. <laughs> to go to all that effort and fail because you're too vain to mush your hair. He was brought before me along with the platinum chip. That's how I knew he wasn't some kind of profligate infiltrator. Benny tried to sell me a story, but Lucius has a way of coaxing the truth out of captives. Everything just comes spilling out. Ironically, I was born a profligate myself, a citizen of the NCR. My family lived not far from the Great Boneyard. After raiders killed my father, my mother sought the followers protection. I was two years old. She found work at their library, cooking and cleaning. I learned how to read and soon I was taking courses. 
free of charge. Oh yes, raised in that tradition. And the teaching stuck. I was taught it was my responsibility to bring the torch of knowledge to the waste. I may have taken the torch part more literally than they intended. When I was 20, the followers sent me east to Grand Canyon. It was my first expedition. Just me and a physician named Calhoun. As an anthropologist and linguist, my assignment was to learn the dialects of the Grand Canyon tribes. What a fucking waste of time. If you think it's worthwhile to make smart people learn how to talk like backward savages, you're a follower of the apocalypse. Or an idiot. Anyway, we met up with a Mormon missionary who already knew a bunch of dialects. Joshua Graham. He was supposed to teach me. But before that went too far, the Blackfoot tribe captured us to hold us for ransom. They were a backward bunch. But the real problem was... They didn't know how to fight. The Blackfoot were at war with seven other tribes, each just as pissant as they were. But outnumbered like that, they weren't going to last long. It's one thing to be taken hostage, another to be lashed to a sinking ship. So over Calhoun's objections, I decided to take certain steps. I taught them how to use the guns they already had, how to strip and clean them, how to breathe when pulling a trigger, how to reload ammunition. They looked at me like I was some kind of a sorcerer. So I taught them how to make explosives and started drilling them on small unit tactics. If there's anything I learned as a follower of the apocalypse, it's that there's a lot of good information in old books. Duide et impira, divide and conquer. I led the Blackfoot against the Ridgers, their weakest enemy. When they refused to surrender, I ordered every man, woman, and child killed. When next we surrounded the Kaibabs, and they likewise refused, I took one of their envoys to the Ridgers' village and showed him the corpse piles. This was new for the tribes, you see. They played at war, raiding each other, a little rape and pillage here, a little ransoming there. I showed them total warfare. Like I said, there's a lot you can learn from old books. Kaibabs joined me, and the Fredonians after that. All the pissant tribes with names that should be forgotten. I knew from the start I'd need to eradicate this plague of tribal identities, replacing them with a monolithic culture, a uniform identity. So that's what I did once my confederation of tribes was large enough. I crowned myself Kaisar and created a single great tribe, my legion. I sent Calhoun, the follower captured with me back west, with a message that I should not be interfered with. Joshua Graham, the Mormon interpreter, stayed with me and served as my first legatus. That's right. Decades of warfare, absorbing lesser tribes, gathering power, forging the dross into a vast, razor-sharp scythe. My legion's expansion has never ceased. Much of the Utah and Colorado and all of Arizona and New Mexico are mine. We have cities of our own, but nothing compared to Vegas. Finally, my legion will have its Rome. Do you want my opinion as a former citizen or future conqueror? Actually, my opinion is the same either way. As a young man, I was taught to venerate President Tandy of Shady Sands the founding mother of the new California Republic. Did you know her presidency lasted 52 years? And that her father, Aradesh, was the Republic's first president? Does that sound like a democracy to you? Or a hereditary dictatorship? Because the council didn't dare oppose her. She was too popular. She had the people's love. So things ran smoothly, more or less. And as soon as she was gone, as soon as there really could be democracy, what happened then? Ever since losing its queen, the NCR has been weaker, more diffuse. Democracy has been its weakness, not its strength. Greed runs rampant. The government is corrupt, accepting bribes from Brahmin barons and landowners to the detriment of citizens. The NCR is a loose conglomerate of individuals looking out for themselves. It's lost virtue. 
No one cares about the collective, the greater good. It's not built to last. I'm just hastening the inevitable. Of course, the most powerful my legion has faced. Also the first to which I am ideologically opposed. Until now, every tribe I've conquered has been so backwards and stunted. Enslavement has been a gift bestowed upon them. My conquest of the Mojave will be a glorious triumph, marking the transition of the Legion from a basically nomadic tribe to a genuine empire. Just as my namesake campaigned in Gaul before he crossed the Rubicon, so have I campaigned and will cross the Colorado. What else did you want to know? I know he's a coward, hiding behind an army of robots ensconced in that tower of his like a wizard in one of those grognack comic books. Some say he's a man, others a machine. I don't care. He's in the way. I've analyzed the region's tribe to determine how they might be useful. I may tell you more at a later time, if it suits me. What else did you want to... What up? Complete. So you're the visitor I've heard some of the legionaries talking about. Oh. Give me a shout if you need anything else. Are you ready to return to Cottonwood Cove? Thank you. 
Well, howdy, partner. I see you, bro. Where to, partner? The recent disturbance had been dissolved. I take it you've come to deliver the platinum chip? I'll be happy to. Such a small thing, isn't it? And yet so capacious, so very dear. Decades of hiring salvagers out west to search for this little relic in the ruins of a place called Sunnyvale. Back then, anyway. That's where the chip was printed on October 22nd, 2077. It was to have been hand-delivered to me here at the Lucky 38 the next day. But the bombs fell first. Suffice it to say, the delivery was never made. A great deal shall be happening, a cascade of events with you taking a central role. At the moment, however, all you need to do is take the elevator all the way down to the bottom level. What you see there will help you understand the significance of what you accomplished at the fort. educational, don't you think? I've since broadcast the upgrade to every Securatron in range of my transmitters, and I must say, it's causing quite a stir down on the strip. The foundation is laid. My Securatrons on the strip are upgraded, and those at the fort ready for action. Now it's just a matter of adjusting the attitudes of some lesser groups while we wait for Caesar's Legion to attack Hoover Dam. Outside New Vegas, at what was once called Nellis Air Force Base, resides an unusual tribe known as the Boomers. They are, shall we say, aggressively reclusive. They have several howitzers they fire at anyone who dares approach the base. Artillery of this sort has a range of several miles, if it's going to fire on Hoover Dam, I want it firing at my targets. If not, then I want to make sure that the Boomers don't sign similar treaties to fire their guns in support of the NCR or Caesar's Legion. Well done. The Boomers' firepower may prove an advantage when the battle for Hoover Dam comes around. 
Your next assignment won't take you far. It concerns the Omertas and their den of vice, Gamora. As the decisive encounter between the bull and the bear looms close, my concerns about the Omertas have grown. I've never expected loyalty, mind you. A reliably underhanded tribe is just as constant to deal with as one that always runs true. But that's just it. Lately, the Omerta's cooperative silence has been deafening. Not a single complaint. They're up to something. What? That's because he ceased to be relevant when you recovered the Platinum Chip. Revenge doesn't interest me. Progress does. Sorry to deny you a moment of primate triumph, but you'll have to go elsewhere to sound your barbaric yawp. What else did you want to discuss? Yes, though at the time they called themselves the Slitherkin. A vicious clan, not that that's changed exactly. They were nomads, capable fighters, but their specialty was betrayal. They'd invite travelers into their yurts, drug them, murder, or enslave them. They took pride in their craft. I don't think Omertas saw other people as people at all. Everyone else was just... prey. They reminded me of a certain criminal element Vegas used to attract. I told them some stories, gave them some clothes, and they ran with it. The Omertas are fanatically loyal to each other. Still, among any group, one can find the occasional degenerate. Gomorrah's receptionist happens to be one. For years, she passed on whispers of what was taking place at the casino in exchange for payment. A few months ago, she clammed up. Odds are she's scared. But I've had no way of approaching her. Start with her. <laughs> 